What's up guys and welcome back to the bait making station. Today we're going to be baking a brand new bait from Do It Molds. I'm using a brand new mold that just got released. Now this bait is super awesome. I've been looking forward to introducing it to you guys because it's just such an awesome shape that's going to be good for so many different things. Whether it's Texas rig, punching, putting it on the back of a jig, putting it on the back of a bladed jig, putting it on the back of a buzz bait. This little shape is going to be able to do a whole bunch of different things and I'm excited about it because it flips right into my wheelhouse of flipping and pitching and catching fish on the big stick. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Let me show you this brand new shape and let's make some up. And here's the brand new mold. It is the brand new Do It Molds Hatchet Crawl. This is a three and a half inch crawl style bait. You got that good thick body that's going to be able to accommodate putting it on the back of a jig using a big flipping hook, a big EWG style hook. You got those flanges on the claw. Now these flange has been designed to be more like kind of an old school grub style bait. But it's going to have just a little bit different action. So it's more that oscillation instead of that flap up and down. So it's a very different look at a kind of common crawl style shape. And I'm super excited about it because like I said, flipping, pitching, doing the things I like to do, this is going to be a great shape for that. So let's make some up. Let's get some ready. And then we're going to go get them out on the water and we're going to catch some fish on them. All right, guys. So let's get going on this pour as always we got to grab some stuff here to get ready for this pour i'm thinking today i want to do like a green pumpkin purple and black flake i love a good purple flake and a green pumpkin base put a little bit of chartreuse on the claws with some dip and dye and go to flipping with that because it does a really good job of looking like a bluegill and so we've got about a cup of plastic here that we're going to be working with. As always, I like to put a little bit of softener and a little bit of stabilizer in my plastic. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five drops of softener in there. And let's do about the same of the pasta sauce stabilizer. Now, as always, you hear me talk about these different things like this. So what the softener does is obviously soften up the formula just a little bit. This is gonna help to make those baits just a little bit softer. It's gonna make that plastic for me a little bit softer overall without losing the durability. So what I like to do is I actually like to use a medium formula and then soften it as I see fit. The reason that I do that is because it allows me to make baits that have plenty of action with with the ability of being able to catch several several fish on one bait and then what the stabilizer does is it just helps the plastic to cook up and not degrade while you're cooking it and recooking it and it allows you to make multiple pours with this plastic so we're gonna go ahead and get it in here and start cooking it up like always go slow and steady this isn't a race to the finish so I usually go anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute um, as I cook this, you know, just 30 second in in increments as we go up, as we get this stuff up to temperature. Me personally, I don't use a uh, instant read thermometer. I kind of just know when the plastic's ready to be pulled out and to start working with. And so, yeah, we'll just do it by eye. Now I got my mold sitting over here on my warming plate just to get it good and warm and ready for when we're ready to start pouring, getting those molds good and um, primed and ready to go can make it a heck of a lot easier when it actually comes time to start pouring the plastic because what priming it does is it allows that mold to get just a little bit warmer and it's going to make that first few pours not a waste of plastic but instead they're going to go a little bit more smoothly so i've had those sitting on there for probably about five minutes had my injector sitting on there for about five minutes and those should be good to go. Now, as we're cooking this plastic, what you're gonna notice is right now, is it's still got that milky color to it that, I mean, it literally looks like milk. So that means that that is raw plastisol when it starts to cook down to that more, um, you know, like clear color, that's when we've actually cooked it out. So now let's talk about the colors that we're gonna be using today. Like I said, probably gonna be using some green pumpkin so this is the x2 green pumpkin color from do it molds and then we're gonna be using some uh, 0.40 hex black flake and some 0.40 hex purple um, flake this has got the Canadian blue on top but this is the purple and so those are the two colors that we're gonna be using that black is gonna kind of help to give that bait more of a profile and kind of get rid of some of that translucency that the green pumpkin will have if we don't put too much in there. And then the purple obviously just pops really, really well and does a really good job of, in my waters, 
mimicking bluegill. I mean, when you put purple with a little bit of chartreuse together in any of these bodies of water around here, you look just like the bluegills that the bass love to eat so much. Now, another important thing, if this is your first time cooking plastic, not only do you want to take your time, but you also want to make sure that you've got all your safety equipment on as well. So make sure that you've got your heat gloves on and all of those different things because that's going to make sure that your hands are safe because you are dealing with very, very warm stuff that can burn you very, very badly. So you do have to be careful with it. So now as you guys can see here, this plastic is starting to cook up. It is starting to get up to temperature. When you start to get that elasticity in the plastic and you start to lose that liquid kind of form that it takes, that means that you are getting it up to temp. Now here's the thing, you will go through a phase of elasticity where that it starts to kind of congeal and turn into plastic and then you will hit a stage when it liquefies again. When it liquefies again, that means you are at temperature. Now, if you want to do this with an instant read thermometer, a little like laser thermometer, 365 degrees is the temperature that you are looking for to hit the temperature that it needs to be to make a good clean pour and to have that uh, plastic cooked completely. Now, like I said, very excited about this bait. I think primarily for me, this is going to be a great bait for the behind the Texas rig, behind the jig, but most importantly, flipping and pitching. I love to flip, I love to pitch. It's one of my favorite things to do. And it's just kind of a, you know, power fishing technique that I use a whole, whole ton during the spring and all throughout the summer and on into the fall. And just the size of this bait, the shape of this bait and everything about this bait just screams, you know, that power fishing flipping style that I love so much. And so I'm very excited about it um, to use it and to see what I can get done with. I'm actually gonna pour these things up and take them on a little fishing trip here in just a few days where I'm going to do some flipping and some pitching and just do what I love. All right, so I believe our plastic is ready to go. You can see how runny and liquefied that it is. And so we're going to start adding our coloring. So like I said, going with a green pumpkin base. Uh, I want this to be a pretty dark green pumpkin. Um, so actually, you know what? I want to do a little bit lighter green pumpkin. Let's do a little bit lighter green pumpkin. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drops, which in this much plastic should keep it pretty translucent and not make it too, too dark. Cause I want this to do a really good job of mimicking bluegills, like I said, and I love that good light green, almost watermelon base. And then adding that purple in there, which and honestly, I like that a whole lot. Hmm, still just a little bit more. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So the X2 color is very, very dark. Um, you don't have to use much of it to make a big difference in the plastic. So just keep that in mind. If you do buy X2 colorant, um, that that X2 color is going to mix up a little bit darker. And honestly, that's about dang near where I want it right now. That actually looks really good. Now let's put some flake in this bad boy. So we're gonna do, um, let's see here. This is the .40 flake. We're gonna go ahead and do half a teaspoon of it, which is quite a bit, but I do want quite a bit of that purple in here. And then we're going to do some 0.40 black flake, which we're only going to do about a fourth of a teaspoon of the black flake. Because that black will change the color of that plastic. Not cooking in, but what'll happen is, you know, these are high heat um, flakes. And so it helps to keep from bleeding into the plastic and changing the actual color of the plastic. But what it'll do is just adding that darker kind of color in the overall mix of the plastic will make that plastic darken up a little bit but that purple should do a really good job of offsetting that black and making this pop just a little bit and as you guys can see there actually looks pretty daggum good you know what we're gonna do a little bit of a audible here let's go ahead and put some blue flake in too so this is um one or 0 0.15 hex blue. 
we're gonna go ahead and do a fourth teaspoon of that because that blue will pop too and does a good job of looking like bluegills as well. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. And my redneck neighbors, if you can hear them, are shooting off fireworks because boys and girls, it's almost 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. That's it right there. That looks really good. All right, guys, so let's pour up these craws. So this is a four cavity mold, so we only get four craws out of each pour, but I mean, with a cup of plastic here and the ability to just sit out here and kind of work and work and work, we're gonna be able to pour up enough craws to probably go on a pretty good little flipping mission, especially with the consistency of plastic that I'm using here. Like I said, I use that kind of medium formula, add just a little bit of softener and it allows it to have enough elasticity where you can like pull it through things and stuff and fish can bite them and you're not gonna rip off a ton of claws. Um, but also gives it enough toughness where you can go with like three or four fish on one bait. And so we're gonna let these cool for just a minute. I'm gonna get all of the stuff kind of cleaned up here, get ready for the next pour, and then we'll crack the mold open and we will see what these look like. And we're going to crack open this mold and we're gonna look at what these crawls look like. So like I said, again, this is the hatchet crawl. Number one, I love the freaking name. What a great name. Um, and we're about to see what they look like. So here we are. Uh, yeah, these things are freaking awesome, guys. Check these out. That honestly turned out better than I thought it was going to. That is an absolutely beautiful little bait. That thing is going to absolutely freaking slay flipping. And I'm going to be taking these with me on a little trip that I'm going on very soon. But... We got some more to pour up. We got some more to pour up. So I've just thrown all of my, um, I think they're called spews. I don't know. I call them like little plastic nipple things. I've thrown them all back into the mix there. And we're going to start warming this back up, getting it up to temp. And we're going to keep pouring some crawls. Now, if you've never poured plastics before, I've got a whole set of videos about pouring plastics, making plastics. There's so many resources online. Do It has a whole set of resources on their YouTube channel. It's absolutely phenomenal. But this is your mold. And so when a lot of these molds don't have a hinge on them. And so what you have to do is you have to use these little quick grip, kind of like C clamp things and just clamp it down on both sides, just like this. And that allows that mold to be stuck together. And then that keeps the plastic from running out. You want to make sure and have a good solid, um, you know, seat on both sides of that mold, because if you don't, and your plastics are going to pour all wonky and they're going to run over and it's just not going to pour how you want it to but as you guys can see the best part about plastics making is it all melts back down so like even when i get done with this if i have a little bit of extra i will save it because then i could use that later maybe to pour up some neds or mix up some more plastics or mix this in with a different color and make more plastics and so that's kind of cool thing about making your own plastics is just the recyclability of the whole process um, you can even take brand name plastics. You know, if you're a big fan of Powerbank or Zoom or whoever it is that makes plastics, you know, obviously I'm a big Powerbank guy. All of my Powerbank baits that I use um, that end up getting ripped or whatever, I could throw them into one of my little, um, my little Pyrex bowls here. I could melt them down. I could make brand new plastics using something like this hatchet crawl mold. So kind of a cool thing to consider when it comes to plastic making is just the ability to cycle and recycle. Now here's the deal. Everything I'm gonna be talking about is linked down in the pinned comment and in the description. So if you wanna pick up the new hatchet crawl mold, these things should be available by the time this video comes out. So go down there in the description, use those links. Those links are my affiliate links. And so when you use them, it lets do it know that I sent you. And then it also allows me to keep on making videos just like this one for you guys, where we are making some awesome soft plastic. So we got a good running plastic again. That plastic is up to temp. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour up 
another batch. All right, guys, so I have poured up 12 of the green pumpkin crawls here very, very quickly, about 15 minutes, and we have poured up 12, so not too bad. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to a little private pond action that um, I think is going to be very, very fun. Now, the thing about said private pond is it is some very dark, tannic, dingy water, and I want to take some of these crawls with me. Now, not that the green pumpkin wouldn't work, but I do have some straight black. And so we're gonna make some straight black with just a little bit of flair to it to take with us to throw into this pond and see what we can get done with it. And so we're about to work on that one. So we're gonna set this Pyrex over to the side. We're gonna pour this Pyrex out here, which has some plastic in it. Just gonna pour, pull that out of there. Have us a fresh Pyrex. And we are going to see what this straight black hatchet crawl is going to look like. So we're gonna have to cook up a whole new uh, bowl of Pyrex here. We're gonna have to mix up a whole brand new color. And then we are gonna have to pour some crawls. And so with a little bit of movie magic, we're going to do that right <laughs> So we've got a cup of plastic ready to work with here. So like I said, we are going straight black. We're gonna add some stuff to it, but for the most part, straight black. It's gonna stay a black base, black everything. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and a little bit more. So 15 and, 15 and a squeeze of the black X2 color. So that's gonna make it really, really dark dark like my soul that's a joke so actually we're gonna have to probably add a little bit more than that still a little too smoky for me one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and a square more oh yeah that's dark dark now And I tell you what, guys, straight black. So many people look past straight black as a viable color. But let me tell you something. Straight black is not just a nighttime thing. High sun, bluebird sky days when you are flipping shade, black can get you more bites than green pumpkin. Straight up, that's something in my experience that I have noticed and something that I've seen make a difference in my fishing. Now, black flake this is the point uh one five black flake we're gonna go a fourth or actually we're gonna go half a teaspoon of that just to give it a little bit of depth and complexity even though it is a black it doesn't really need much depth nor complexity but just a little bit of sparkle in there can make a difference and then we're also going to go a little bit of gun metal kind of staying with that black base we're going to do a fourth of a teaspoon of gun metal in there just to give it a little bit of pop because that little bit of pop kind of makes it look like a bait fish or a bluegill and that little bit of sparkle especially on those bluebird sky days like i said when you're flipping the shade could get a bite so that right there is straight sick i love it that is gonna be awesome especially in this pond that i'm going to that's freaking awesome there you go guys Wow, that's really, really good looking. All right, I'm gonna stick this back in there for about 30 seconds just to get it back up the temp. And then we're gonna pour our first set of black crawls. All right, and just like that, we have poured up 12 of these brand new hatchet crawls. And man, am I excited about them. Can't wait to get them out of the water, to be totally honest with you. But there you guys go. There's one more look at the black. 
with the black flake and the gunmetal flake. And then we can get one more look at the green pumpkin that I poured with the blue, purple, and black flake. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous baits. I think that they turned out exactly how I wanted them to. Um, just the overall color and everything about them was perfect. Again, you got that flange on the bottom, which is absolutely awesome. I think these things are gonna be great for behind a jig, a Texas rig, flipping. That's where my big one's gonna be. And even a Carolina rig. Cause what's cool is these baits have no salt in them, so they float. So behind a Carolina rig, that might be the juice. I didn't even think about that, but there you guys go. Absolutely gorgeous baits. I think I did a really good job with them. Let me know down in the comments what you would call these two colors. What would you call the green pumpkin? What would you call the black? And where do you see yourself throwing this bait the most? But as always, thank you guys for watching. You guys are sweet and we will see you later.